welcome, welcome, welcome to the Purity After the Promiscuity Podcast, where we are redefining a woman's work. I'm your host, Jenna Renee, and I'm here once again coming at you for the one time and the one time. <laughs> and so, yes, we're here and we're going to get um, get it going. Today's episode is called Daddy's Girl. This is, this is something I feel like the Lord has been impressing on me this morning, okay? So I'm coming to uh, to speak to, to my sisters. And again, season six is all about set the captives free. And so that is what we are here to do. And so I'm so excited for today's episode. But I just want to tell y'all something, friends. Let me tell y'all. I did a whole podcast on Monday, this past Monday. It was almost an hour long and it was so good. And it did not say. And I was like, so distraught and I was like "Uh -uh, I'm not recording it again because it was like it was so good but then it just came to my mind like maybe it was for me even though I really felt like I wanted to share that with y'all it was so good but y'all it didn't save and I was just like I need to I had to take some some time because I was like nah but you know what sometimes things happen we don't know why but it get greater later, right? And so without further ado, we're going to get started with today's episode, which is called Daddy's Girls After the Countdown. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So. Welcome once again to the Purity After Promiscuity Podcast. I want to welcome all of my first-time listeners. I thank you so much for stopping by and just taking a moment to um, chit-chat with me today. And um, we welcome you here. We welcome you to this community where we are redefining our worth as women, walking in our true calling, walking in our divine um, and true worth and our true destiny, the way God created us, the what God said that we are, who God said that we are, right? We are tearing off labels. We are tearing off, you know, um, our history, our past things that do not align with what God said. And we're going to walk unapologetically in who we are in Christ. And we're going to be doing it. And we're going to be fi- and we're going to be doing it. We're going to be fabulous doing it. Okay. And so this is a place where it's safe. This is a safe community. We are here all learning and growing and healing, becoming whole and the best versions of ourselves. Right. And so if that sounds like something you're interested in, please continue to rock with us. Go ahead and hit the like subscribe button and so you will be notified every time i release a new episode right and so i just want to thank you all for joining us and also to my og to my um loyal listeners who've been rocking with us from season one or for a few seasons or whatever however long and i just appreciate y'all y'all are so like just truly important you guys are so truly special to me i am so excited every time i see um, streams and downloads and support like however you guys um continue to support this podcast it just really it is like such a blessing and i just want you guys to know that you guys are helping to to partake in this, the sharing of the word and, the, and and healing and wholeness that's going forth as you share as you as you download as you stream it is how you're supporting and you're partnering with me so i appreciate all of my partners out there all of my girls and even some of my brothers who do tune in i thank you guys so much and i just appreciate you and so i just want to give it up for y'all because y'all deserve that right because i just want to let y'all know y'all the real mvp if it was not for y'all i could not continue to get up and do this and and i would not continue to gain more um, visibility and get in front of more people so i'm so excited for each and every one of you guys and i just pray that today's episode is an episode that will change your life i am praying that today's episode is an episode that is transformative that it is true change that chains fall off right that bondages are broken and that even things that you may not be aware of like maybe you've been having a struggle maybe you've been having you know you feel like you just kind of been in a place where you don't understand like why you cannot seem to overcome in a certain area i pray that today you get your answers okay so again we're we're going to talk about daddy's girl and and i want y'all to know that this episode is going to be something that's near and dear to me okay and it's so important too, especially as we are going on this journey of healing and becoming whole. One thing that is so imperative is that we be healed and whole from our past traumas, our childhood traumas. And that may include 
daddy wounds, right? It may include mommy wounds. But what I found and when it comes to um, walking a life with the Lord, you know, having this relationship, right, with the Lord and being a daughter or, you know, we hear the term son and it's, it's universal. It's talking about, you know, men and women. And so being daughters of God, right? really truly being able to be to 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 be um anchored right anchored in that term of daughter when it comes to god is a direct reflection of your experience as a daughter in the earth and i know for some that's like a no-brainer it's like yeah that that makes sense that that you know like of course however i don't think that for me anyway and maybe for you all I don't think I really, really thought about it too much, right? I think my assumption was that because I came to the Lord and because I have some um, revelation of who he is and some knowledge of who he is and because I have some experience of who he is, that I automatically will just trust him and I will automatically receive him as father and I will automatically be comfortable in my identity as a daughter. But as I've got into this season of my journey, I have learned that that's not the case. It, it's not an automatic. It doesn't just happen. And yes, he's God. And yes, he is not a man that he shall lie. And yes, he'll never leave nor forsake you. And yes, he is, you know, eternal and all comprising. And he's sovereign and he's majestic and he's mighty, right? And he's true and he's righteous and he's righteousness, right? He is all of these things, right? But if you don't have a revelation of what a father is, in your personal experience, it's going to be difficult to know your heavenly father as father. And so as I have gotten to this place, and, and, and it's interesting because when you go on your healing journey, and for anybody who's just now embarking on it, or maybe you've been in it for a while like myself, and you feel like you've you feel like you kind of hit a brick wall, like you you were on this journey of healing, and you got you you've overcome some areas, you've healed in some areas, right? You you got deliverance in some areas, and now you feel like you didn't hit another wall where it's like something has triggered you, and you see that there's another level of healing. And I want to encourage you today to understand, like my counselor when I was in counseling a few years ago, she said something to me, and that it was so profound, and she was saying how. Healing is like an onion. And when you think of an onion, right, you can peel an onion and you can peel off many layers, right? She was saying healing is like, it's like an onion is layered. And so you may have, you know, healed on one level or in one layer, right? And then you you continue to go on your healing journey or in your journey and you hit a and you hit an area where you're triggered and you find out that now you need he healing in this area, well, that doesn't mean that you didn't heal in the other area. That just means that there's another layer of healing that needs to be done. And because a lot of times trauma starts in childhood, it, as you grow and as you continue to, you know, age, you're going to have multiple layers of where you may have experienced some trauma or you have experienced some, you know, something that has caused a deep wound, a deep pain, a deep, you know, um, void in your life. And so it makes sense that, you know, it's not a one and done. You know, I think for me, I thought healing, like with a lot of things, is just a one and done, but it's truly a process. And in the process, I think it's a good sign, even though it may not feel good. It's a good sign when you find yourself that you have to now, you're, you're, you're honing in on another level of, of another layer or level of healing, because that's letting you know that you're getting closer and closer to be, to, to becoming whole, right? We cannot be whole without healing every area of our soul. Like when David said in Psalms 23, like the Lord restores my soul, his soul was his mind. It was his will. It was his emotions, right? It was his appetites, his intellect, the, the things in his, in, within that have been skewed, that have been tainted, that have been, you know, um, wounded because of his experiences in life. Like it is normal. It's, it's not normal in the sense that there are some levels of things that happen to us that should not happen to us. Like there, there are things that we experience, like being abused, being sexually abused, being neglected, right? Like being, um, you know, in a very, um, you know, 
unhealthy environment um being um being mentally abused emotionally abused spiritually abused like whatever like when you experience these things and especially when it's at the hand of another person those things are not normal that meaning they are not of god like god did not put us in this earth to be abused and mistreated however because we live in a fallen world and that people are not perfect we sometimes encounter individuals who are unhealed themselves who are not whole themselves and then they they are able to be used and they cause damage and trauma in in others right and so it's not normal but to have to heal from something is normal like most of us have to every human being is going to have to heal from something right because we're living in this fallen world and so as we are in this journey of redefining our worth if you feel like you are struggling with trusting god if you feel like you are struggling with feeling safe with god like you're struggling feeling like god gonna come through for you like i want to encourage you today like you're not alone you're not alone number one like i'm struggling and i know other people are struggling because here's the thing if you've never had an example of what it is, what a father is if you've never even had an experience of of having those um you know having feeling safe with with a father feeling protected by a father feeling being provided for by a father right having you know being affirmed by a father like it is very very difficult for you to automatically feel like you can have that from anybody else even god it is very difficult like if you have trust issues because every man or every person that you loved or that you trusted or you or you believed that was supposed to be there for you if they disappointed you they let you down they um, betrayed you then it's you do you just have trust issues and just because we're talking about the most high god right just because we're talking about elohim Adonai, right? We're talking about the creator of creation. We're talking about the ancient of days. We're talking about Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. We're talking about the everlasting of everlasting, alone, alone. We are talking about, you know, Yashem, Yahweh, right? We are talking about God. We're talking about the one who will never leave us nor forsake us, the one who loved the world so much that he gave us his only begotten son, right? We are talking about him. However, in our human experience, when we have been wounded in our souls, when we have been abandoned, when we have been rejected, if we don't heal those things, those things are going to bleed into our relationship with God. And then you're going to find yourself feeling like I can trust God in certain areas or you may not trust him at all. Maybe you just find it very difficult to believe that this God loves you so much and he's not going to leave you and he's not going to fail you and he's not going to disappoint you and he's not going to, you know, allow you to, you know, to die, right? It's going to be difficult because in your mind, you haven't been able to even fathom or even comprehend a, a human being, you know, and of course we're not, we can't compare God to humans. But it's like the relationship with a father is so important. And even when you read the Bible, you see where the, the father has so much influence in a child's life, right? The, the father, he spoke, he, he named them a lot of the time. So he gave them their identity, right? He spoke into their destiny. A lot of times he would bless them, you know, he could put a blessing on them. And sometimes, you know, even when it came to, you know, um, Jacob, he blessed some of his sons, he cursed some of them, you know, um, and that had to do with, you know, whatever he had discerned and or experienced based on their own personal character and things that you know that he witnessed you know and what he felt was appropriate but most of the time like the the patriarch the father you know he was the one in 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 in, in the position of influence and he gave the direction for his children right he and, and for daughters like da fathers did not even give over their daughters to just any old man right when a man wanted to come pursue a man's daughter he had to come to the father and he had to prove himself to the father and he had to be you know 
approved of by the father. He had to show the father that he was able to take care of the daughter in the same way that he was the father was providing. He had to show the the father that he could protect the daughter. He had to show the father like he had to go through so many things to even be a you know for the the father to feel comfortable to allow his daughter to be to be betrothed right to this man. A lot of times in those cultures in those times they have to you know give a bride price they had to pay a dowry they had to do certain things right it was just a bit it was a huge thing because a father understood his position as the protector as the provider as the as the priest as the covering of his daughter so he did not allow just any old joe blow come to even take his daughter because he knew that he was going to be handing over something so precious something that is so precious to him that he still had the uh that he still had the responsibility to take care of even though he was giving her over to her husband he wanted to ensure that she was going to be in good hands so he had to make sure that he did his due diligence as a father as the protector right as the one who was responsible over his precious daughter before he would even hand her over to another man that's how serious it was that's why daughters could be just in their father's home and taken care of and, you know, and provided for, even if they, you know, were a certain age, you know, where, where, where maybe most people would say, oh, you should be married right now. But even if she wasn't, she knew she had the security that her father was going to protect her, that her father was going to provide for her, that she was safe, right? That she could rest and be at peace, that she was in her father's house. But if you've never had that experience, even though God even more so, even more so than our earthly father, even more so he is our protector. He's our provider. He is our covering. He's our security, right? He's everything to us, even more so. But because we've never experienced that in any capacity, it is difficult just to transition into that. And so I find that because now I'm in this place where I am now going through this process of trying to understand, like, I've been a believer, a Christ follower for a long time, right? I'm not new to this, you know, for those that are a babe, a babe in Christ, thank you. You know what? I just celebrate you. Congratulations. Welcome you into the body, the family of the body of Christ. Right? It's a beautiful thing. You have now been adopted into a family of many brothers and sisters. And um, I just thank God for you in Jesus name. But, you know, I have particularly been walking this walk for quite some time. And I've now really been discovering in this season Come on, somebody, because sometimes you don't see certain things about yourself until you enter to certain seasons. Mm, that's good, because what happens is like it's it's like when you're on one level, you 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 just it's like you only can, you know, see so much. Right. You only have your experience of that level. You maybe, you know, on that level, you you trust God. Maybe on that level, you know, you feel safe with God. Maybe on that level, you know, you believe God is who he say he is, right? Because you're not in a place where, you know, you're truly outside of your comfort zone. But it is something about being outside of your comfort zone that it will show you what's inside of you. And now that I've been in a place where I've been, you know, it, it feels as though I've been stripped of my comfort zone, right? I've been stri stripped of the things that I look to 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 have comfort and security and so that leaves me in a place of uncertainty but then that also leaves me in a place where i have to totally trust god because sometimes we think we trust god when really we trust it in ourselves because when we got when we got the bag when we when we making the money when we have the career you know when we have the house when we have the car when we get in a good report from the doctor you know when all is well when all is going well in our lives a lot of times we can believe and think that we trust God and not to say that we don't we probably do but it's you really know if you trust God if all of that get taken away and you're down to nothing how do you respond how you respond lets you know if you really trust God or if you really trust God like you think. 
And so for me, that was my experience. Like I was in a place of life where things were going well, you know, financially I had was secure, you know, we, I had a home, we had a car, you know, I was, I had started a business, you know, our needs were being met. I didn't worry. Like not to say I had no worries, but I didn't worry about how my bills was going to get paid. I didn't worry about how we were going to eat. I didn't worry about how things were going to get done. I didn't worry about where we was going to live. I didn't worry about how we was going to get where we needed to go. I didn't worry about just a lot of things because I had security and I had, you know, comfortability in in, in knowing that I could look at my bank account and, and be okay, knowing that I could look up and know that I could pay the rent so we would have a roof, knowing that. I had purchased a car and it did, I didn't have a car note. And even when I had a car note that I, I had the finances to pay for. So there was a level of comfort there, right? And so even in that, I'm, I'm like, I trust you, Lord. I'm trusting the Lord. And in, in everything in me, I believe that, right? And I contributed it to God, right? I would give him glory for, you know, being in a place of security. And it's not to say that being in a place of security is bad or being in a place of financial stability is bad. No, it's it's to say that sometimes we are even subconsciously putting more trust in these circumstances than we do God. So when those things were no longer available to me, when I no longer had access to that comfort I found myself being in panic. I found myself being in unrest. I found myself being in anxiety. I found myself being depressed. I found myself being stressed out. And those are indicators that I don't trust God. Because when you are truly anchored in the trust of God to be your father. Like if if I can imagine that if I had an earthly father who was like, a present father who was there, who was loving, who was caring, who who provided security, who provided for me financially, who provided for me, you know, um, safety, right? Who provided for me wisdom, who provided for me counsel, who affirmed me in my identity, who affirmed me in who I am, who supported me in my endeavors. Like if I could think of a hero, right? Because I hear a lot of some women when they talk about their father because they had a good father, which is amazing. And they say that he was their hero or how much they love their father. And they talk about how much their father was there for them and how he loved them and you know, was there and and supported them and all of those great things, right? If I could think on that and if I could think that I had that experience in my earth, in my earthly experience, and if I could have transfer that same energy over to my experience with God, when even when though that level of comfort was no longer in my life, I would still have rest and peace because I would know my daddy got me. It's like it's something about knowing. I It's just a thought of it, right? The thought of if I'm in a crisis and I know I can pick up the phone and call my dad because I know my dad got me, because I know I can depend on my dad, because I know that my dad is going to do whatever he can to help me in my time of need, then it wouldn't matter what I'm facing. I would have peace. I would be at rest. I wouldn't panic. I would still be able to have joy. Because I know my daddy got me. So for some of us, the pitfalls that we're experiencing or even the, the walls that we're hitting or or maybe the triggers that are now revealing things is trying to tell us that God wants to get us to a place where we're daddy's girl. And I know you might think, how can I be a daddy's girl? I don't know my daddy. I don't know my earthly father. He's never been in my life. Or he abandoned me and my mother, you know, or, you know, I never met this man. Or this man may not even be alive. That God is able to be a father to the fatherless. Even in the word, it says he's a mother to the motherless. He's a father to the fatherless. David said, even when my mother and my father forsake me, you're there. David had a revelation of God as mother and father because David, as as, as mighty as he was, and as a man after God's own heart, and as king, he came from a dysfunctional home where he was rejected by his own father, and he was probably, you know, 
mistreated by his mother because she was rejected by his father because she was more like a concubine, whereas the, his brothers, you know, their mother was a wife, you know. So he came from a very uh, dysfunctional dynamic. He came from a toxic dynamic. So he knew what it was to feel rejected. He knew what it was to feel abandoned. He knew what it was to, to, to have his father, you know, not even think of him, to call him in to be considered to be king when Samuel came to their house. His father called every one of his other sons and God said no to every one of them. And then Samuel was like, okay, wait a minute. I know that I hear God and I know God sent me to Jesse's house and you, Jesse. And he told me the next king of Israel is in this household Come is, and is one of your sons. So you must have another one because you done brought these seven sons in front of me. And God has said, no, do you have another? And then the father was like, oh, yeah, David. That might be how you feel, like you're, you're no, like you're just overlooked, you're disregarded, you nobody sees you, like you don't matter. That's how David felt. David was out in the field being a shepherd, doing what he was supposed to do, tending to the sheep, and 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 he was out there doing what he was supposed to do, and he was still over being overlooked. But it was and it wasn't until God had an appointment with David. See, you can be overlooked by your earthly family. You can be overlooked by people. You can be overlooked by your boss. You can be overlooked by, you know, your teacher, whatever. You can be overlooked by people. But when God has an appointment with you, you will go from the back to the front. Come on, somebody. And see, what God wants to do is he wants to take some of us from the back to the front. But before we can go to the front, he has to deal with our wounds and he has to deal with our issues and he has to deal with those places in our soul that has been broken down and he needs to build that back up. And he knows that a lot of it stems from the lack of a father. That is an agenda from the kingdom of darkness because the kingdom of darkness Darkness also understands the power in a father, the presence of a father. Come on, somebody. The enemy is not foolish. The enemy is not, you know, dumb. He knows. He's strategic. He's calculated, right? He's wise. He's existed for uh, just centuries right he 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 is he understands you know like how things work and so what he'll do is he'll cause so much strife and division or he'll cause so much animosity or he'll cause many things to take place to where when a child is born they are born and they are illegitimate or they're without a father right and he does that purposely because he knows the damage he knows the level of damage. Even if you're born and your parents are married and you have a father in the home, but the father isn't present, it causes damage. Or if they go through a divorce, it causes damage. Or if the man is, if the father is there, but he's abusive, right? He's a tyrant. He's mean, right? You know, he physically abused. He verbally abused. He sexually abused. It causes damage. He knows the impact of a father. And because he knows that, that he, he goes out of his way to try to sow seeds and, and, and sow seeds in many of our lives that begin to produce fruit because we didn't have a father. Or the father who was there, he was just not the the man he could be or, or maybe even wanted to be because of the things that maybe happened to him. Because the perpetual cycles that many of us, you know, are, um, you know, brought into knowingly and un well, unknowingly, right? And so... There's something about the, the the importance of a father and until those areas of our soul be healed, until we can truly get our mother and father wounds healed, till we can truly get our childhood trauma and deal with our and deal with our little girl that we the Lord can't really he's not able to really release us into the destiny into the things into a certain level of influence a certain level of promotion a certain level of celebrity a certain level of success a certain level of financial um you know abundance a certain level of whatever it is he has for us be until we're wounded be i mean excuse me until we heal from those wounds because it it'll destroy us or we'll destroy it and also even more than that god wants us to be to know him as father. He wants us to know that we can trust him. He wants us to know that we can lean on him. That it doesn't matter how bad it looks. It doesn't matter how impossible it looks. That he got us. That daddy got you. Just imagine just having that knowing in your heart. 
that no matter what I face, no matter what is before me, no matter how bad it looks, no matter how difficult it is, no matter how great the challenge my daddy got me, that as his word says, he'll never leave nor forsake me. As his word says, he's not a man that he should lie, that his word is not going to return unto him void, that he is a provider and that he provides all of our needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus, right? And that he withholds no good thing from the upright and the righteous, right? When the when we see these things and read these scriptures and meditate on them, that we have, that we they resonate with us because we have that assurance, that blessed assurance that we know God is our Father. I find it interesting that Jesus always referred to God as Father, and God was His Father, right? He was the biological Father of Jesus, not Joseph. Jesus Joseph was like the bonus Father, right? But Jesus always said, "I and the Father are one." What I see the Father do, I do. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He he just he had the revelation of God as Father. So my prayer for you, my prayer for me is God, help us to have a revelation of you as Father. Hinder, heal our innermost parts, oh God. Heal that wounded little girl who was abandoned, who was rejected, who was misused, who was who was abused, who was forgotten, who was left, who was forsaken by their earthly father or earthly parent. And heal us, oh God, that we can trust in you, that we can receive you as father, that we can know you, that you have us, that we can be anchored in the security that you're going to provide for us, that you're going to protect us. Lord God, that you will go before us, that you will fight for us, that you will go to the end of the earth for us, that we can trust that we don't have to be overwhelmed, that we don't have to be anxious, that we don't have to be worried, that we can be secure, that even if it's not in that moment, but that you are going to come through for us, that you are God who hears our prayers, that you are God who sees, you are God who knows, even Hagar, as she was being uh, uh, rejected, as she was being cast out for really doing what she was asked to do she was asked by her maid her you know her 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 uh her maiden right she was asked by you know abraham she was asked by them to 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 basically be a surrogate because sarah they no longer wanted to wait on god because that's what we do when we don't trust god fully in areas because maybe we feel like god you're taking so long i've been waiting i've been believing for years when you trust God and you know him as father, you know it don't matter how long it takes. He's going to come through. It don't matter how long it takes that he's not going to fail you. And you can still, you can have that perseverance and that patience in the waiting season. Because you know your God, your dad got you because you're a daddy's girl. But even Hagar had to, she experienced loneliness. She experienced being cast out. She experienced being rejected. She experienced being for the very thing she was asked to do. And and because now Sarah started feeling away and Sarah, you know, began to be jealous because now Hagar, she has pregnant, she got pregnant. Now she's flaunting her pregnancy. You know, now she's, now she got a little bit of attitude because that's what sometimes people do. You get a little taste of freedom. You get a little taste of success. You get a little taste of promotion. Sometimes it gets to your head. Okay, so yes, hey, God, it got to your head, baby girl, but it getting to your head it caused um, envy and jealousy to rise up in, in Sarah. And Sarah said, Abraham, you're going to have to do something about her. You're going to have to get rid of her. And then they kicked her out. And she went into the desert. And she had nowhere to go. She didn't know what she was going to do. She thought she was just going to die. And God, the angel of the Lord, met her in that place. And he revealed himself to her as El Roi, the God who sees. He sees your plight. He sees your hurt. He sees your pain. He sees your abandonment. He sees your rejection. He sees the abuse, right? He sees the mistreatment. He sees it. He sees it. He's the God who sees. So I pray for every person who feel like Hagar in this moment that you will have an encounter with the God who sees you today. In the name of Jesus. And he told her that and he gave her a word and he gave her a prophetic word concerning the child she was carrying and her life. And he spoke into her and he affirmed her and he spoke, uh, gave her identity and destiny. And then he told her, go back to your maidservant. 
But see, she didn't go back the same. And she didn't go back empty-handed. She made it and have nothing material in her hand. But she had something nobody could take away from her. And she had a word from God. She had destiny. She had identity. She had an encounter with God. And so she had that to anchor herself to, to hold on to. So I pray that for you today. I pray that for me today, that we have an encounter and experience with God. That we can hold on to and anchor ourselves. That it will begin to heal us from the inside out. That like the woman with the issue of blood that we can be restored from the bleeding the oozing that all the holes in our soul have have been have been um leaking out because of the different experiences and traumas that we've had that the lord will begin to speak to us like jesus he said daughter come on somebody some of us have been bleeding on our families bleeding on our children bleeding on our loved ones bleeding on our friends bleeding on our co-workers and it's not intentional it's because we have been wounded. We've been bleeding for years. The woman with the issue of blood, she was bleeding for 12 years. She tried everything she could do. Some of us have tried everything we can do. Some of us have tried weed. We tried alcohol. We tried drugs. We tried men. We tried women. We tried the club. We tried success. We tried degrees. We tried, you know, ministry. We tried church. We tried relationships. We tried all of these things to try to fill these voids. And you've still been bleeding. And see, the woman with the issue of blood... She tried everything. She spent all of her money going to every kind of physician and doctor to try to heal her. She probably tried some some natural remedies. She probably tried some herbs. She probably tried, you know, some some medication, some therapeutic treatments. She probably tried any and all things because she was desperate. And it wasn't until she had an encounter with Jesus where all she did was touch to him and his garment. And healing virtue came out of him. I pray that the healing virtue of God meet us today in the name of Jesus Christ and be Begin to overtake us right now in Jesus name. She some healing virtue came out of him and he said who touched me because I felt virtue coming out of me. See there's something about when a woman gets to a place where we're so desperate and we know that we've tried everything that we could try. We've tried it and we know that we cannot um and we 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 nothing that have is working and you begin to cry out to Jesus. You begin to cry out to God. There is something about the cry and the desperation of a woman that when we begin to put our eyes on Jesus and that, that healing virtue begin to come out of him and he begins to say, he looks and he begins to wonder, who is that? Who is that coming unto me? Who is that crying out to me? Who is that? And that healing virtue comes out and then he looks and he begins to see, oh, that's my daughter. And he begins to speak to us and he say, daughter, your faith made you well. That was his response. When he he already knew who touched him, but see, she had to know he knew. Come on, somebody. See, God is all knowing. He's all knowing, so he knows all things. He knows that we're crying out. He knows that we're desperate for him. He knows that we've been praying. He knows that we've been our tears that have been he's been collecting. He knows the the the, the anguish and the hurt and the pain. He knows that we've been you know trying to do all that we can, and that now we've gotten to a place that we are so desperate that we are just crying out for him. But now he wants us to know he know. See, she had to know that he knew. She knew she touched him. And she knew she got healed, but she didn't know he knew. And so it was something about Jesus saying to her, I know you touched me. And it's your and in and, and your faith, you touched me in faith, and your faith has made you well. So today, for every one of my sisters who is listening to this episode, I pray your faith make you well. I pray that you cry out to the Lord like never before. I pray even in this episode, as it's resonating, as it's beginning to stir things up in your soul, that as you cry out to God, even those silent cries, come on somebody, even the silent cries get answered. Hannah had a silent cry. You got to read your word. Hannah had a silent cry and she was crying and she was in so much pain and anguish and she was so tormented that Eli thought she was a drunken woman because she her mouth was moving and nothing was coming out. There are times when we get to that place of desperation, that place of hurt, that place of pain where it's a silent cry. But guess what, sister? God hears the silent cries. And because of her silent cry, when she had to tell Eli, I am not a drunken woman. It is only this hour of the day. I am a woman of great anguish. I am a woman of great, uh, who is experiencing some agony because of this thing in my life. And I'm crying out to the Lord. And when she was able to speak other those words out to Eli, he looked at her and he said, and may God 
answer your request. Hallelujah. And so don't think maybe because your cry is silent, because you've cried so much, because you've been crying so long, you can't even cry no more. God answer silent cry, sister. He wants you to be a daddy's girl. He wants you to be anchored and in, in confident in who he is as your father. He wants you to know that he's going to protect you, that he's fighting for you. He wants you to know that he sent his only son to die for you. He wants you to know that he, nothing can separate you from his love. That's what the Bible tells us in Romans, that nothing, not heights, not depths, not angels, not demons, not life, not depths, not death, not valleys, not mountains, nothing right? Nothing can separate you from his love. And we have to have that revelation. He wants you to be a daddy's girl. Because when you find yourself being a daddy's girl, and you know that your heavenly father got your back, you will never ever face, be faced with worry and anxiety and stress about situations and circumstances again not to say that it won't try to come up that's why we got to take that thought when 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 anxiety try to come in when fear try to come in we got to put the word on it and we got to put it on it with a knowing like when you know that you know you like no I be anxious for nothing because in all things through prayer and supplication, I make my request known and the peace of God, right? You know that Jesus told us in Matthew 6, do not worry what you're going to eat or drink, what you're going to wear. The Father already knows you need these things. He closes, he feeds the birds of the uh, of the air, the lilies of the field, he clothes them. And they're here today, gone tomorrow. How much more? How much more when you know, not just know the scriptures, but when the scripture are in you by experience, when you know that you know that no matter what it looks like, that your father got you, that there is another level of boldness and, and confidence that comes with that. And there's nothing the enemy can do with that. And that's why he fights so hard to keep us in a place of woundedness and brokenness. He don't mind that we are Christ followers. He don't mind that we receive Christ. He don't mind that we believe on the Lord Jesus. What he mind is that you actually have an encounter and experience and revelation of God as your father. Because that's where your identity comes from. That's where your destiny comes from. Come on, somebody. Right? That is where your that 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 is where your security, right? That is where your power lies. In knowing who your daddy is. Like, can you imagine? Going through a situation and the first thing you think is, I'm about to go get my daddy. Because you know your daddy is your protector. You know your daddy going to handle it. Like, even if your dad literally is in, in his, your earthly father can't physically fix the situation. Because you have such a confidence and revelation of your father as protector, as healer, as, as comforter, as, um, as your security, as a fixer, as a solution, as wisdom. You don't, it don't, it don't even dawn on you that what if my dad can't physically because you just know my daddy got me. I pray that for you today. I pray that you become a daddy's girl, that your heavenly father, if you never had a father, that he could be, that he's more than a father to you, that you experience such an encounter and a revelation with God as your father, that it fill every void of where your earthly father was supposed to be. And I believe that God is going to do it and he wants to do it because he wouldn't have had me get up and do this episode today about daddy's girls. He wants you to know that he is your father and he wants you to come to him. But he understands that there may be some things that he has to work through, that there may be some wounds, some roots of woundedness and some roots of woundedness um, and, um, and roots of trauma and childhood trauma that you have to be healed from. And so as you're seeking God on, you know, What's, what you need to be healed from and, you know, how does he want you to go about your healing journey? Just listen. Allow Holy Spirit to lead you. Some people he may say go to counseling. Some people he may say go to inner healing. Some people he may say go to sozo. Some people he may say go to therapy. Some people he may tell you to, you know, go and write a letter to the father or the mother or whatever. It could be a different thing. Whatever he tell you to do, do. Because that is where your healing lies. Because he wants to see you set free. And he wants to give you all that he has for you. But there are some things that he can't give us. Come on. He can't give us some things because we're not ready. Because we'll destroy it or it'll destroy us. Because we're not healed. So today I believe that you are being set free. That the chains are being, that they are falling off in Jesus name. That you are going to walk boldly and fiercely in your healing that you are going to become a daddy's girl and you're going to know your father in jesus name so thank you all for just um just 
listening to this episode. I pray it blessed you. I pray that you allow it to sink in. Listen to it again if you need to. And, and go to the Lord and seek him. Be honest with him. Pour your heart out to him. Tell him how you feel. Tell him that you don't trust him. Tell him that you, you find it hard to believe. Tell him that you find it hard to receive him as father or you whatever it is because he already know. And see, that's what you do when you love your father. And when you have a good relationship with your father, you can tell your father anything. Right? God wants to hear from you. He wants to hear from his daughters. Come on. He wants to hear from his daughters. So I just thank God for you today. I just pray that you become a daddy's girl even now in Jesus' name. And so it, I just want to leave you all with knowing that your past does not define you. Even if your past includes you never having a father or being abandoned or being abused or being forsaken or being forgotten or being left out. Guess what? Your past does not define you. It develops you and you are worthy.